Good afternoon. If you would stand with us, we're going to open up with a couple of Stanley's favorite songs. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Send him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. I come to the Tells me I am his 
joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known well it's uh, songs that he loved to sing amen I could still see him standing over here and singing those out, and when he sang, and he sang out, you knew it, amen, and uh, you could hear him, and what a blessing that is. Well, join me in a word of prayer today as we open this service celebrating the life of Stanley Lee. Dearly Father, we come to you today. We thank you for the life that Stanley Lee lived, and Lord, we will pay honor to the one who deserves our honor today, and Lord, we just want to be very clear, Lord, that you are the one to get all the glory, the praise, and the honor, because undoubtedly it was you that changed his life and will change everyone else's life that calls on you, unto you. I pray that you help us to find uh, comfort. Uh, Lord, we know that uh, we realize that he had run his race and he had lived a full life. And so it's not that we, um, you know, uh, look at life and think that he, you know, could have lived forever on this earth. We know that that wasn't uh, possible, but he leaves behind a big hole. And Lord, our, there's a, an emptiness uh, humanly for us, but God, we know that this isn't goodbye, it's just good night for the believer that we'll get to see him again. And we pray for comfort for each and every one. We pray that anyone here today that, that doesn't know the same Lord that Stanley loved and lived for, that this will be the day that they turn to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated today. Uh, if you're here, and uh, just make you aware that we do have the room set up outside off the foyer, and uh, it's as a live stream there as well, uh, if you need to step out for any reason. Um, Stanley Dean Lee went home to be with the Lord on April 4th, 2024 at age 100. Stanley was born to the late Andrew and Merle Lee on June 16th, 1923 in Chillicothe, Ohio. Stanley met his wife Christabel Cottrell in school. They married July 4th, 1941 and went on to have four children, Ronald D., Timothy M., Crystal A., and Candace E. Stanley was a lifelong follower of Christ and unwavering in his faith. He often shared the gospel with all those he came in contact with. In addition to being a dedicated and loving father, Stanley loved his pastor and church family at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Stanley is now reunited with his wife, sons, daughter Candace, and grandson Brad Zeisler in heaven. He is survived by Crystal and Jeff Buzz Zeisler of Chillicothe, grandchildren Ronald Lee Jr., Nikki Lee, Fabian Lee, Craig and Diane Zeisler, Ashley Zeisler, Amanda and Troy Valentine Miller, and Christy Miller, great-grandchildren Sierra and Donovan Spriggs, Leslie and Andrew Bachman, Nicholas Seisler, Kayla Cunningham, Chauncey Valentine, and Emma Seisler. Several great-great-grandchildren, brothers Dave Lee of Frankfurt and Ed Lee of Alabama, a sister Patricia Olaker of Chillicothe, and several nieces and nephews. Um, I'd like to share uh, a psalm in just a moment, but I uh, would like to let you know that um, after the service and burial, we will have a dinner provided for that Stanley loved and enjoy uh, downstairs in our fellowship hall. And during that time, we will open the floor and uh, we'll have a mic set up and a, and a pulpit there. You can come up and share stories because like everyone had, as someone put it, a Stanley story, okay? And so uh, we knew we probably didn't have the time here for everyone to share that story. But during the dinner, we want to invite you back to, to share some of those stories. Well, Psalm 23 tells us about the great shepherd. And it says, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup 
runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And today, he's not just uh, in this house, but he's in the house in heaven. We thank the Lord for that. This time, Gabe Peter's going to come and sing a song that the family had requested, and then we'll come back and uh, try to eulogize the best we can a uh, hundred years in just a short period of time. But pray that the song will be a blessing to you. time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer held on a little tighter know what I'd give for one more day with you Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed is healing mine Only scars in heaven They all belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now I know the road you walked was anything but easy you picked up your share of scars along the way But now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is run The pain is all a million miles away The only scars in heaven They all belong to me such thing is broken and all the old will be made new and the thought that makes me smile now even as the tears fall down is that the only scars in heaven the hands that hold you now. Hallelujah. 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 For the hands that hold you now. Not a day goes by that I don't see you You live on in all the better parts of me Until I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run Until I finally see what you can see Oh, the only scars in hell to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now 
even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now For that song, Brother Gay, but uh, kind of a tearjerker, you know, when you <laughs> listen to that song and uh, brings back a lot of thoughts. So I think I might need some tissues here. So <laughs> sorry, I'm supposed to be the strong one, you know, but uh, today we're not just burying a, a member of our church, we're burying a friend of mine. And uh, Just a second here. Well, how do you eulogize a legend? You never fully can. Maybe it was just through my eyes, but I don't think I was the only one. He was larger than life to all who knew and loved him. Um, I pastored the church here uh, where I was able to pastor Stanley for a long time. And what kind of man was Stanley? We, we could read and talk about the obituary and some basic details about how he was born and raised in Chillicothe and was faithful to the Lord and served the Lord and married his high school sweetheart, Christabel, and had four children and of course, many grandkids and great-grandkids, several great-great-grandkids. He loved them all. But, you know, these kind of details don't fully describe the life that Stanley lived. Um, just going to walk through some of this, and so just bear with me. I just wanted to, it just I felt like no matter what I say, it's not going to do the man justice. So I just want to kind of say that on the front end. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, uh, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find... Faithfulness is a very rare characteristic, but I believe today that we're gathered to pay honor to a faithful man. Stanley was faithful in so many ways. We know that he was faithful to his commitments. He, he loved his family, and, and he cared for them. And I realize that he grew up in a generation that may not be quite like our, our current day and time, but um, he loved and he was faithful and cared for them. The Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Stanley was a native Chillicothean. He was born in a small house on Paint Street on June 16th. We think that's the date, 1923. There's an underlying story there. We don't totally know that's the right date. It's the best we're going with, all right? He was the third of ten, ten children. He had, there were seven boys and three girls. Uh, three of those boys died in infancy. When Stanley was born, he was, he, he was what they used to call a blue baby, and they set him aside, presumably that he was dead. But one of the family members noticed some movement there underneath the, the covering, and uh, they, God wasn't finished with him, and Stanley's parents were told he would not survive, but all I got to say is God had other plans. Stanley grew up on the East End. He had numerous stories of fond childhood memories with the neighboring kids. I love to hear his stories. He's uh, riding bikes, playing ball, competing, and even fighting. If Stanley's mouth ever got him in trouble, and you know that it did, uh, he would tell me about his friend Gail, and uh, Gail would come to his rescue. Gail was, you know, saying he was small with a big mouth. Gail was maybe not quite as big mouth, but was big guy, and he could pr protect him. If Gail wasn't around, it, Stanley's mouth got him in trouble. His legs got him out of him. He could outrun anybody. But Stanley was not afraid of anyone, and uh, he would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with anybody. Uh, Stanley's family, uh, growing up, did not know the Lord. They were given to, to drinking and carrying on. This was his own testimony, and but he talked about how they'd had revival services at a Tabernacle Baptist, and there was a guest preacher that came through, and they were invited out, several of them, 
And uh, that moment changed their life, changed the trajectory of their life when they went and his parents got saved and several of the other ones likewise got saved. And from that time forward, his life changed dramatically for Stanley. And when his parents got saved, Stanley accepted Christ as a young man and his faith never wavered throughout his lifetime. Stanley and, and Christabel met in school here in Chillicothe, married soon after. God blessed them with 70 years of marriage. There's a very sharp-looking couple there uh, at both beginning and even sharp, uh, of course, later on as well. Uh, 70 years of marriage, uh, Chris passed in 2011. She was the love of Stanley's life, and he would do anything for her, devoting himself exclusively to her care toward the end of her life. Um, Chris felt the same about Stanley and never wanted anyone but him to take care of her. And sometimes she didn't want him around, but she didn't want him not around. And so uh, you had to know that they had those, one of those kind of relationships. People say, that, you know, never would it be said that two, two people came together and at times didn't always see eye to eye. And he said sometimes she would have the craziest suggestions and ideas. He said, I didn't understand it all. He said he thought that was just the silliest uh, counsel he could ever receive. And find out she was almost always right. And so... Uh, and all those years later, you go over there, and, and I would talk to Chris, like, are you keeping Stanley in line? And she says, oh, i got to give him a knock on the head every now and then. And, but they seemed like they just, you know, they went through it, they worked through it, and they, they kept their vows, and what a blessing that was. A couple things about Stanley. Stanley did not graduate, but instead went to work to help his family financially. His first job was at the Wholesome Bakery. Uh, essentially, most everything that Stanley knew in life, he was self-taught. Uh, he never quit learning. He was always inquisitive eager to learn and work hard to achieve his goals. After their marriage, Stanley and Chris helped to run the family store. It was called Lee's Grocery there on, on East Water, of course, where Stanley uh, would reside. Stanley worked three jobs at a time, the store, Wherever, and real estate for a period of time. He started working at Wherever before the plant even opened and retired after 30 years of service. Stanley's interest in real estate led to the development of the Chrissy Lee Housing Subdivision in Kingston. May not still, still be named the, the same, but um, Crystal Drive, of course, after uh, his daughter Crystal still remains, and then Candy Lane as well. Uh, so those are neat, uh, neat, neat memories. Stanley, we know, had many interests in life. He was fond of softball. Uh, he coached for a time. He loved to play. And even up into his 80s, he would play softball at church picnics, pitching, hitting, running the bases. He was competitive, and he was vocal in letting players know if he thought they could be playing better. This included Buzz as well, all right? And so uh, they kind of had a little bit of chippiness at times, going back and forth. Again, Stanley was a legend. He lived to be 100. He lived life to the full. Uh, married 70 years, walked with the Lord for 80 years. God had always been faithful to him. Uh, he wasn't supposed to survive, but by the grace of God, he did. He wasn't supposed to live long, and yet by the grace of God, he did. Can I just kind of put a little bit of caps, uh, capsule on his life when you think about this? Consider what he saw during his life from 1923 to 2024. In 1923, the world was just adjusting to life after World War I. Listen to some details if you just took a glance at America in 1923. The average wage in 1923 for manufacturing was $1,400 a year, $27 a week. The price of gas, you could probably imagine, 22 cents a gallon. Electricity in the early 1920s, only about 40% of homes had electricity. Majority of farms did not. In the 1920s, only about a third of homes had telephones. In this same time frame, you could buy a brand new Model T Ford runabout for $290. I'd say things changed a little bit there. You probably couldn't make a car payment for once a month for that. Cars on the road, in that time, there were about 9 million registered motor vehicles in 1920. Uh, in our days, it's just under 300 million cars on the road. Uh, the radio was just uh, you know, beginning, and by the end of that decade, there were a few hundred radio stations. In 1923, the $1 that you would have then would be worth $17.59 today because of inflation. Just a couple other notes and I'll move on. Five pounds of flour then was 27 cents today. It's nearly $5. A pound of butter, 52 cents then is $9 today. 10 pounds of sugar, 83 cents today. It's over $14. A can of Campbell's tomato soup, that never runs out, right? Nine cents, but today it's $1.56. Food price at $20 in 1923 would be the same equivalent as $425 today. Let's think about what his life encompassed. He arguably saw more change in the world during those hundred years than anyone could. He lived through the 1920s, 
the Great Depression, which undoubtedly shaped him, the 1930s and World War II. He tried to sign up to go, but the doctors would not permit him to go because of a heart defect. Through 1948, the establishment of Israel, the 1950s and the Korean War, the 1960s and a man being put on the moon and civil rights in Vietnam, the 1970s and 80s and 90s and the turn of the millennial uh, calendar, 9-11, the Middle East wars, and then in the 2000s, the passing of his wife, several beloved family members, up into 2023 when at 100 years of age he had a birthday party to end all birthday parties with a packed out church fellowship hall just downstairs less than a year ago. The Bible says in Psalm 90 verse 10, the days of our year are three score and ten or seventy, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Uh, he didn't live 70, 80, or 90, but he lived almost 101 years. Through it all, his testimony was clear. Essentially was this. Again and again, you could hear him say this. I have failed the Lord many times, but God has never failed me. What a testimony. Can I just share just a couple things? Because this is what Joshua said in Joshua 23. He comes to the end of his life, and he at the same likelihood was right around that 100 or, or so year mark. And this is what his testimony was. He would gathered all the Israelites together, uh, all the elders and all those. And he said this. He says, I am old and stricken in age. And he says in verse number 3, And you have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. He goes on down and he says several things here. And I just want to bring this to your attention. Uh, Joshua says there that God has not failed in one thing. If I could just remind you that what Joshua said, I believe Stanley would stay. God, he, said, he would say to us, give God all the glory, for God is the one who's done it. And, and God had seen them through everything. God had fought for Israel. God had protected and blessed Stanley. God will do the same for you. Not only give God glory, but know and obey the Lord and his word. Joshua 23, 6 says, Be ye therefore courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside, therefore, from the right or the left. Then he would tell us also to cleave to the Lord, no matter what comes our way. Jo Joshua 23, 8 says, But cleave unto the Lord your God, as you've done unto this day. Then he would tell us in verse 11 to love the Lord. He says there, take heed unto yourselves that you love the Lord your God. And that verse, verse 14, and if you don't remember any of the verses I say, remember Joshua 23, 14. When I, when I think of Stanley, this is, this is Stanley's verse to me. God is good and faithful and he will never fail you. Joshua gets to the end of his life, and this is how he encapsulates his life and the testimony for the people. He said, and behold this day, I am going the way of all the earth. And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing, not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you, all are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. And that's his testimony. That's what he's told us again and again from the pulpit to his home, and every chance you got a chance to talk to him about it, that God has been good and faithful and never one time failed him. Can I just give you some lessons? I don't think we just need to only talk about Stanley. I think we need to come out of here and learn from his life. If you come here today and you reflect upon his life and you go out the same, then you haven't, you haven't taken to heart what he would want you to take to heart today. He has taught us how to be faithful to God, church, and loved ones. He was faithful to his God, his church, his family, and friends right up until the last day. He adored his father and mother. The Bible says to honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the earth. I'd say God honored that in his life. He loved his parents. He, he would do anything for anybody. He would literally give you the shirt off his back. If you had a need, he was more generous to help you out, more than generous. Raising a family, providing for them, 70 years of marriage, caring for Chrissy when her health declined, waiting for her hand and foot. He loved her genuinely, 80 years of walking with Christ, faithful to church even when it wasn't easy, and most would not have. You know, Stanley could have easily become unfaithful to the Lord and to the church as he got older, even to his family, but you know, he could have said things like, well, I'm old, but you know what? He still came. He said, I can't, uh, I can't hear, but he still came. I can't sing like I used to, but he came. I can't serve like I used to, but he came. I can't give like I used to, but he came. I can't lead and teach and oversee like I used to, but he came. Listen, you don't have to be good. You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be the strongest or greatest, but you are commanded like Stanley to be faithful, and he was just that. He taught us how to face the mountaintops and valleys. He taught us not to dwell on the difficulties that life presented. He just pressed on for the Lord. 
You know, I saw him. I was there when his wife passed. I was there when his family members passed, when his own daughter passed. And I saw the way he faced that. And it, it just spoke volumes to me. Not, not just something he could say, but the way he faced it. He just, he just pressed on with life. And I think that spoke volumes to, to each of us. It's not only how you handle life, but how you face death. When his wife died, his children and grandchildren, his sorrow was not in despair without hope. He had sorrow with hope in Christ in heaven. We saw in Stanley how to give glory to God, to give glory unto the one whose name alone is worth it. We learned how to be generous from Stanley. Stanley was a generous person. Why? You see, how I asked the family, I said, why was he so generous for? What, what motivated him to be so? And he essentially would say this. He would, he would just say, well, God will take care of me. <laughs> God has been good and generous to me, and how can I not likewise do that? And that's what Jesus said. It's more blessed to give than to receive. He taught us how to pray. Stanley was a prayer warrior. I used to love to hear him pray. You know, they just, you just felt like heaven's ear was bending down when he prayed. I don't know. And, and uh, he just prayed. He prayed at church. Uh, he prayed in private. Uh, he prayed for whoever he came in contact with, whether it was someone at the hospital or of late, his own caretakers. He would stop when they're coming to care for him, and he would pray for the caretakers. And I asked today, who will carry on his legacy of faithfulness? Stanley was a living testimony to a living God who could take someone who seemingly had everything against him and raise him up from being a stillborn to 100 years of life. And we all know that God is able to do that in your life. He taught us the importance of God's Word. Stanley was a student of God's Word. He read it. He studied it. His house was filled with literature regarding the Word of God, Christian books and study resources. He, he would come to myself and others and share books and publications about the nation of Israel and of, of present and future events. Stanley took time in his later years. You know what he would do when he was trying to grasp and understand the Scriptures? He would take notepads and he would literally write out the Scriptures knowing and believing that as he did so, he could learn it more and more. And many journals were filled with just where he had, he had pinned out s sections of the Scripture. He was like a modern-day scribe. He did this for years, and he often had interesting insights and questions from the Scriptures. He taught us how to be a good steward of the life and resources God had entrusted. He was resourceful. He was always active. He was always accomplishing something. He was a salesman and knew how to stretch a penny into two to make a little go a long way. Stanley was a collector, and you know, you and I may look at this, and we may not understand. In the early years of our church, when we had uh, done a project and there were some carpet scraps left, he asked if he could have them. I was like, we're just going to pitch them because we can't, you know, can't keep them, and he had taken them home. I never forget, maybe uh, some time had passed, I stopped to visit him at the home, and while I did, he said, you notice anything about that chair right there? And I was like, no, I don't. And he said that right there, he had a chair that he'd had for 40 years, and he was not going to buy a new one. And, and it needed to be reupholstered, and he'd taken the carpet, and he had attached it and reupholstered the part of that chair that had worn out with the, with the carpet from that. Uh, and it's still there today. When I went the other day, it's still there, and I still see that carpet. That carpet was, I know, it was 20 years old when we had, from here, so... Stanley was a collector. Now, you may look at that and say, well, why would he do something like that? You know, I'm sure he was in a situation, per se, where he needed to do. But think about his life growing up to the Depression that made him frugal. And he saw uh, usefulness in many things that others would discard. But Stanley's generosity was unmatched. He gave to anyone who asked or to anyone where he saw a need, never caring whether they were able to, to fully repay it. He gave, it gave him joy to be a blessing to others. The Bible says if we have the world's goods and see someone in need, that we are to move to help, to give and it shall be given. He would help people out, and it didn't matter who that person was. Uh, it could be family, friends, um, attempting to do so with folks in the church, and so often not taking no for an answer. Uh, I know uh, folks in the church, uh, probably many of you, uh, he has sought to help, both family, friends, and, and otherwise. I, I never forget, he came to, to us when my oldest began to drive, and and uh, he had a pickup truck. And he said, I want to give this to your son. It was an older a pickup truck. He said, I want to give this to your son. I said, Stan, look, brother, I, I love you, but what, you know, and it, it was like, you didn't want to tell the guy no, because it's like, you know, here he's just a, uh, you know, a blessing a, and an authority figure in your life and you're a senior and things. But I said, we, I, I love your heart, but we, we can't receive that. 
And then it came to my younger son who was having some vehicle problems. Both of his cars at times were, were broke down. He had an old pickup truck he was fixing up in his little beat around car, and both of them were broke down. And somehow Stanley found out about it, and he came up to my younger son and tried to give him some money to help him out along the way. And the younger son said, I, I can't receive that from you. And he said he was almost a little put out that he wouldn't accept the money. And, and I know many others in the church were the same way. And he, he just had a heart of generosity. And I think the thought is, is really this. He, I, I believe that he saved where he could so that he could be generous where he needed to be. And there's a difference in that. There are many people who are not generous. And, and so him being frugal was purposeful. So he could... And I don't know what anyone gives, but I know his heart was to fill the basket, to fill the church, to start more churches, to see other people serving the Lord, and missions done, and church planning done. And it's a great principle for us all. He taught us the value of winning souls to Christ. He was given evangelism and door knocking and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ by passing out gospel tracts. He would take gospel tracts and pass them out wherever he went, whether it be hospital or hospice care, neighbors, his community. He taught us the value of hard work. He never shirked from hard work. Even after his retirement from the workforce, he would walk for miles or ride his bike. He would collect cans. Neighbors would gather those and leave those for him. And any treasure he found, even in recent years, I think about who he was and his hard work and how he just didn't quit. He would run miles even in his 90s, pick up cans in the roughest part of town. He would ride his bike in, in the 90s, e even when it meant he would wreck and skid his face all up. I remember him being on the back of Paul Dowdy's big Harley when he was 96 years old. Didn't bother putting a helmet on, right? He was pitching softball for us in his mid-80s. He was upset he couldn't run faster around the bases. He drove to church fast, and he may have even bumped the building a time or two, but we're not going to talk about that, all right? He drove his truck over the bridge at church and about went in the ravine, nearly giving Jared, who's in the passenger seat, a heart attack. You saw in the video there, he went down a 200-foot slip and slide, took his shirt off in his 90s. I mean, this guy was borderline savage, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he was, he was bold and courageous. I say that all loving and respectfully. He taught us to never stop living for the Lord and always press on for the, Lord, uh, for the work of the Lord. He was a visionary. He always looked for the next big, big thing. I, I can't tell you, he, he, he never stopped living and being a visionary. I can't tell you how many times, preacher, yeah. And, and, and he pulled me aside and he said, yeah, you know what you, you know what you need to do? He's like, we, we need a canopy out here. We need a canopy so when people pull in, they can drop their families off, you know. And I'm like, that's a great idea. And I'm thinking, head to our next building. So I'm if you're asking for that canopy, hold off just a second. All right, we'll get there one of these days. But he's asking about that. Then he would always come to me and say, Preacher, we need a youth camp. You know, we, we, we need to start a camp for these young people. And, and that was his heart. Um, uh, he, he would help uh, uh, support many campers to go, uh, kids that wouldn't have the money otherwise. He made sure that they went. Uh, I, I'm not trying to be too specific. I'm not trying to rob any joy. I just want you to know the testimony of what he did. These are just some things you may never know about. I remember my brother Josh and his wife, he was with us for five and a half, six years, and they started a church in Xenia. They had started a new church. Josh said, I didn't say anything to anybody, but we needed we had a brand new church plant. Stanley loved preachers. He loved seeing us train. He loved seeing us start churches. And the church was starting out. They didn't have money. They needed carpet in their sanctuary. They were re remodeling. And he's, Josh said, I just alone, got alone with the Lord, and I just prayed, God, we need this carpet, and it's going to cost so much money, and we just, I'm going to, I'm just ask you for it. I'm not going to tell anybody. He said, you wouldn't believe it. Stanley, out of the blue, no one, no one knew, called him up, says, hey, how's that building going? Do you need anything? Josh said, yeah, we need some carpet. And Josh never gave him an amount. And Stanley sent him a sizable amount to put carpet in that sanctuary. I think about the church in Circleville. I've got to tell you this one story. I don't know if I've ever told this before. This is powerful. Um, God had dealt in our hearts about planting churches and expanding what we're, we try to do here. And we had gone up to Michigan to, to be a part of a church that had expanded. And on our way back down, we were really praying, and our hearts had been really broken to start a church up in Circleville, Ohio, and we've been uh, here for almost 10 years at that time. We were coming back, and as we passed through Circleville with the thought that we're, we need to start a church here, but we were praying, God, give it. We literally pulled the car over and, and stopped the car on the way back, and our Sunday night service was about to, to start there shortly. We pulled, the, we pulled over on the side of the road, and, and we prayed. And I said, Lord, if this is your will, you need to make it known. And no, no sooner had we, had we got back on the highway, drove down to evening service, and as soon as the service started, Stanley, unbeknownst to him or anyone else, walked up to me and said, Preacher, can I talk to you? I said, yes, Stanley, of course you can. And I said, I said, what do you need? He said, Preacher, I feel like the Lord is telling us we need to start a church in Circleville. 
And I said, all right, Lord, we're going. And uh, uh, today, uh, today there is a vibrant, powerful church in Circleville, in part because of the vision of the man that we are honoring today. I could tell you story after story. I could tell you about how he loved the pastors and the staff, um, how he would say things to us. He said, we have all these preachers, these great preachers on staff, and how many empty pulpits are out there? Well, one of those was Matt Stallings, and he was now two, two plus hours north of here preaching the gospel every week. He loved us and prayed for us. He, he would at times, uh, he bought us a couple suits. We tried to say no, but he wanted to be a blessing. Stanley was always busy about something. Uh, LBC has had many different homes since its beginning in 2003. Stanley was always there to help with remodeling and refurbishing a new building. He would help paint. <laughs> Although the paint didn't always end up on the walls. <laughs> I couldn't tell him no. Someone said, that paint, yeah, I'm not even going there, all right? It's hard as good, amen? Uh, Kerry Lumber, he would take out refuse for uh, demolition jobs, whatever needed to be done. Stanley was loved greatly and was greatly loved. Stanley was faithful to Christ. As a charter member of our church, he was active down through the years recently in the primetime senior fellowships. They'd even had him speak and share, and he gave exercise and testimony, and people loved him. Uh, he helped serve communion and pitched in helping in the church in many capacities. Everyone knew and loved Stanley. He was active in the ministries. He encouraged everyone he encountered from the oldest to the youngest. He not only just loved the people of his age, but he loved the youngest uh, among us as well. Brother Shane had taken some teens over there recently, and they shared some great time and memory together. Stanley taught us to love the Lord and be faithful to the church and the work of the Lord. He lo his love for the Lord and his work was undeniable. Uh, I never forget in his 90s when he felt like he couldn't do more. He took gospel tracts and he helped us door knock all of Chillicothe. He, he himself in his 90s went out knocking on doors, leaving gospel tracts. The few times he had to be hospitaled, he didn't lay around feeling sorry for himself. He looked at, on it as opportunities to witness and hand out tracts to the nurses. I think about uh, these kind of opportunities in church services with his headphones on and uh, so he could hear the message. Sometimes it was hard to tell whether he was awake or asleep. And he may, you may be over here, and he would close his eyes. Now, you, you say, preacher, he was sleeping. Now, you thought he was sleeping. He had those headsets on. That wasn't to drown me out, but to actually hear because, he, you know, he's hard of hearing. But he, he would say amen before the sentence came out of my mouth when half of you weren't even thinking about saying amen, all right? That's, that's who he was. I'm telling you, he was on it. I'm like, yes, he would get me fired up. And uh, uh, he loved the songs that we sang today as well. Stanley knew God was the God of the hills and the valleys. You know, he had seen God work in his life through the good and the bad, and a Christ-like life was what the outcome was. He had experienced some tremendous heights and very low depths in life from bearing you know, children and his beloved Christabel and grandchildren. Yet with every breath, Stanley praised God for the blessed life he had been given. We see how he finished the race well. I just remember the last good full conversation I had with him when I stopped at his house and, and spent time with him. He shared about his life from his childhood unto the present. And let me just say this. I mean, you think about someone who had, had so many things in life against him. And, and, and all these things, you could say, here's a small man who wasn't supposed to live, didn't even graduate from school, had all these things you, you could say in his life were against him. You know, he buried three of his four children, he's buried grandchildren, he buried his wife, he went through some of the hard things in life. I mean, all these things you could say were against him. Let, let me just say what, what Stanley's own testimony was. He didn't have one negative thing to say. I asked him, I said, well, tell me about your life, you know. I knew this time was, would come. And his thought was just simply this, how good God had been to him all his life long. How God had guided him, how God had protected him every step of the way, how God had blessed his life and been so good and gracious to them. He saw the hand of God time and time again. He said every time it would come to a point where it would look like something would go wrong, God would just step in and intervene. And he said, I didn't always see it at the time, but when I look back, I could see the hand of God and the hand of God and the hand of God, a century worth of living proof and testimony to the power of the living God in heaven. He was my beloved friend. I didn't plan to cry. My daughter asked me last night, I said, Dad, you're going to cry? I was like, I don't know until I get there. I didn't have any plans to cry today. But I lost a friend. But I didn't lose him. I know right where he's at. I prayed for him, and our time we shared, I told him I loved him, and he told me he loved me. For some reason, he had a picture of my family up on his wall. <laughs> Who does that, right? You know, preachers aren't always real popular people. You know, I get that. I've kind of come to terms with that. 
I feel like if I have one member of the church that's always loved me, it's Stanley Lee. He always loved me, and he always prayed for me, and he was always supportive, and he was my biggest fan. You know, sometimes you'd have these guest preachers in, and man, they'd, they'd preach you, they'd preach the house down, you know, and you're like, man, I just need to retire or quit or go find another job, you know. Seems like they don't hold a candle to you. And I'm like, thanks for lying to me, brother, you know. You're an encouragement even when I'm sure you're not telling the full truth here, you know. <laughs> Before I left that day, I said, can I pray for you? And I did. And then I asked him, I said, Stanley, would you pray for me and pray over me? And he did. And man, I'll, I'll never forget that. Stanley wasn't perfect, but Stanley ran the race. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Stanley lived ready. <laughs> he was ready. Stanley fought a good fight. He finished his course. He kept the faith. Regardless of his age, it didn't stop him. He was the most energetic 100-year-old man I've ever met. <laughs> Even with his small physical stature, he seemed larger than life. When God made Stanley, he threw away the mold. Amen. <laughs> Stanley was one of a kind. He was special and unique. He had a fervor that would not relent. He was at all the services and at all the events that he possibly could. He saw service to God not as something he had to do, but something that he got to do for the Lord. He was a great encouragement to one another. He was a true friend to all that knew him. He knew no stranger, and he truly was a, a friend to all and would seek to bring them to faith in Christ. You could see Stanley loved to tell of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was always witnessing time and time again. He was persistent, a man of prayer, a man of the Word, a student of the Word of God. He heard, he read, he studied, he researched. He started writing the Bible out. He wasn't a perfect man, but he had a perfect Savior. He may have failed the Lord, but the Lord never failed him. Regardless of his age, he was always active, faithful, greeting, attending, welcoming, praying, loving. He honored the Lord and he finished the race well. Stanley lived life to the full. He took full advantage of the health he was blessed with into his later years and all that he did. And as has been said well, last Thursday, he went to sleep in Chillicothe and he woke up in heaven. Matthew 25, 21, and Dally is what he heard. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. If you could see me now, you'd know I'd seen his face. If you could see me now, you'd know the pains of race. If you could see me now, you would not want me to ever leave this place. If you could see Stanley today, you wouldn't want to bring him back. He's more alive than he's ever been. Reunited with, or he's with the Lord and reunited with those loved ones who have gone on before in Christ. Stanley's in heaven not because of who he was, the works that he did, the, 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 trying to be a, a, a life that was a good testimony. No, that wasn't why he's in heaven. But Stanley had received Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. There's only one Savior, and there's only one way to get to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ. And Stanley received that. What kind of man was Stanley Lee? He was a man of strong character. He was an honest man, loyal, extremely giving and caring. He is described as generous and energized, supportive, loyal, family-oriented, an encourager, happy, enjoyed life to the full, never met a stranger. He loved God and loved people, a faithful husband and family member. You may be here today and say, well, I didn't get to say goodbye to Stanley. You may have a desire to talk with him one more time, to see him and ask how he's doing. Let's just suppose for once you could have that final conversation. What would you say and what might he say? Well, I can tell you, I believe, without a doubt what he would have said. I'll tell you the story and then I'll, I'll share that. I went to Adina Hospital. He'd had what they thought was either a stroke or a heart attack in his 90s. He was having heart issues. And I went out to see him, and I thought, man, is this the time, you know, that he's going to not make it through? And um, I went out there, and I went, I'm like, i got to pray. i got to encourage him. He's up in years, and all these things seem to be, you know, he's facing. And I went out there to encourage him. <laughs> you know what he said to me? <laughs> I went away more encouraged because he said, God has me in here for a reason. Do you have any more gospel tracts that I can share with the nurses here? <laughs> Listen, we, we come to this day, we don't have to say, well, was Stanley. <laughs> His faith is sight. He's living what we pray and look forward to one day. If he could speak to you now, know what he would say. Don't worry about me, <laughs> but how about you? Are you ready? Listen, the most important thing you can take away from this day, is he made preparations and the Lord says to those who have prepared themselves, he's prepared a place. And he has made preparations. Don't worry about me, but how about you? He would want to make sure you were ready to be with the Lord. 
And clearly that is his testimony. The Bible says in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, Jesus says. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether you go, I go, you know, in the way you know. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know how to get there. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Today, take comfort regarding Stanley. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Listen, just today, I do not want to face him one day without giving you a clear opportunity to be saved. Because I know that's what he would want. And that's, no, that's the desire of my heart. And today, you just need to understand a few things before I close. The first thing is that we're all sinners. God is holy. God is just. And his justice cannot be graded on the curve for you or I. God's justice by sin, because of our sin and violating God's law, we will die. The Bible makes that very clear. Physically death, spiritual death, we're all sinners. We've all missed the mark. We've shot for perfection and we fall short. We're not like God. We're not as he is and we've fallen short. What does that mean? Well, not only physically are we going to die, we're, we bear the effects of that today, but spiritually we will die. We'll be separated from God in a place called hell forever. That's a horrible thing to think about. But you know the great news today is not one of you in this room have to go there. You have the same opportunity that Stanley received about 80 years ago to turn from your sin and call on the Lord Jesus Christ, to know that you and I are the enemies of God. We've sinned against God. God is truly not our friend. He's our foe until we come to faith in Christ. And today, my friend, God has loved you. He sent his only begotten son to live a sinless life that you could never live, to die a sacrificial death that you could never die, to be buried, to confirm his death, to rise again on the third day, ascend into heaven after 40 days, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will save anyone anywhere that will by faith believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, my friend, if you're not saved, we're going to give you an opportunity to do so. The good news is this. It's not just for a few, it's for all. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't care who you are and what you've done. The same God that saved his father and mother is the same God that will save you. The same God that saved Stan Lee and Christabel Lee is the same God that will save you. But you must recognize your sin has separated you from God. And God has not just stayed up in heaven. He's come all the way down to redeem you that you might be saved. Would you bow with me in prayer? As you bow your head in, in prayer, I'm going to give you an opportunity today. You can call on the Lord. And as you listen in, my friend, you think about your own account you know one day you're going to be in a box someone's going to be standing and talking about your life but that won't be you that's just your shell because your soul will live on somewhere forever where will that soul go are you right with god listen my friend you, you can't make a decision on a future day you don't know you have today's the day now's the time the same god through christ that saves stanley is the same god that will save you if you'll turn from your sin and by faith believe on the lord jesus christ you too will be saved. If you're here today, my friend, and you need to be saved, pray with me. And it's not per se some magical prayer. It's a prayer of repentance and faith where you turn from sin. You believe that Jesus Christ is your only salvation. And if you'll believe on the same Lord that saved Stanley, he'll save you. The Bible says that he will save you unto eternal life. Would you pray with me? Pray, out, pray with me out loud or pray from your heart. Just pray from a sincerity of your heart and God will save you. Pray with me. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart and save my soul. And help me, Lord, to live for you. In Jesus' name. And with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you pray that just now, but you might make a testimony of that, would you slip up your hand as a recognition that you prayed that today? What about you? Anybody today? Dearly Father, we thank you for Stanley's life. We thank you for his legacy and his testimony. And Lord, I pray that you would work in every one of our hearts, Lord, that we would see this man who ran the race, who finished the race well, who was a, a tremendous testimony. And Lord, he did so by the power of the Spirit, that you had saved him and you had changed his life. And Lord, I pray that today we would all go out of here being more motivated. Lord, I, I thank you for his life. I, I think about that. And Lord, I just reminded in the last service he was at and I didn't know it was his last service but Lord when I called upon him to pray he was unable to to physically stand and pray as his physical body and would not allow him 
And it just struck me that day, Lord, as you was just searing into my soul that same thought, who will pick up that baton and run with it? Lord, that the former generations will not live forever, but we're called to be faithful. And thank you for the life that he ran and the, the race that he fulfilled. Lord, help us to be faithful to carry on the task that he's run his whole life through. Thank you for his uh, testimony. Thank you for the promise of heaven. I pray for peace, Lord, to pass it all understanding, to keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We pray your blessing upon everyone as we go from this place. In Jesus' name, amen.